Cheers! Cheers. Happy Pride! <laughs> Retro Review episode 16. To continue and end our celebration of this year's Pride Month, we are reviewing The Birdcage! This movie is so good. <laughs> I mean, it's still one of the funniest movies ever. It's just perfection. <laughs> first things first, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Try Wink.com slash movie bitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. Wine! <laughs> also, please subscribe, share, thumbs up, all of that jazz. All that jazz. That jazz. Also, if you haven't watched The Birdcage, you oh. are missing out. L no, lucky you. Yes, lucky you. Because you get you. to go oh. and watch it for the first time. Oh. Although I'll say, I've seen this movie 800, 900 times. I laughed so hard I cried multiple times while watching it <laughs> today. Yeah. So, you know, maybe... <laughs> Literally after watching it, I was like, oh, we should watch The Birdcage again. Yeah. I was just like, it's the I literally bed. just finished watching this movie and yet I want to watch it again. Give me more. <laughs> Always more. Well, so I think we should start by talking about Mike Nichols. Okay. The director. Uh, he's amazing. Fabulous. One of my favorite directors of all time. Wow. He did The Graduate. He did Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Closer, Angels in America. Regarding Henry. Working Girl. Silkwood. Postcards from the Edge. Oh my gosh. Catch 22. I mean, it's like insane. The carnal Knowledge. Oh my god, if you haven't seen Carnal Knowledge, it's super fucked up and really good. Like, Without fucked, knowing fucked in a psychological body. way. No, no, it's sort of like closer in that it's like, let's see how these people can torture each other emotionally. And you're just like, yeah. <laughs> if you're into that. And then there's the birdcage. And then there's the fucking birdcage. And then I mean, there's some other ones in there that are under. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you've seen La Cage Folle. I have. Okay. I haven't seen it 800, 900 times. No. It's great. It is great. It's hilarious. That's another movie. If you Maybe you've seen Birdcage. Right. And you're like, great, I just rewatched it right now to watch this review. What else should I watch? You could watch the French original yes. La Cage Folle. The Birdcage is campier and more fun and yeah. there's Robin Williams and there's Nathan Christine Lane. Baranski and Nathan Lane. Diane like, Weiss. Yes. Oh my God. Like, so because of that, it takes on like an extra level. Yeah. I'm naturally inclined to think the Nathan Lane, Robin Williams side of the movie is funnier and more enjoyable. Right? Sure. But Gene Hackman and Diane Weiss, Weiss are oh my fucking God. killing it and killing. it's equally as funny. Like, I, both, well, I mean, slightly less, but like, it's very funny. It's, it's still very it's funny. Possibly equally as funny, certainly less fabulous. Certainly less fabulous, but just almost just as funny. Yeah. It starts, we get that long yes. pan oh shot gosh. across yeah, the, the ocean, ocean the and yeah. right down into the club. I mean, Mike Nichols is just. I just, every, all the shots are composed so beautifully. Yeah. It's just, I was just looking at it like, I love you. I'm like, oh I miss God. you, Mike Nichols. You're so amazing. And I didn't realize, um, in the credits, Elaine May wrote the fucking screenplay, Nichols and May. They were like a famous comedy duo for years on the radio, on wow. TV, all. Huh. And they had split up and then they Makes got sense. back together for this. I mean, like, love to work it. together. Sure. She's fabulous. Fabulous Penn Island? Oh, yeah. Elaine May's definitely on Fabulous Penn Island. <laughs> I mean... This cast is on Fabulous Kent Island. Pretty much. In one way, shape, or another. <laughs> or really yeah, because Cock Cove doesn't strictly have to be for sex slaves. No. Could also just be for fabulous, enlightened, hilarious men. Exactly. Robin Williams is absolutely on Cock Cove. Oh, yes. Possibly as a sex slave for someone to rub their hands through so much hair. Look at hair. that glistening gold <laughs> in that hairy chest. Look how it glitters in that thick black nest of hair. So a couple of fun... Casting okay. things. Oh. Robin Williams was originally cast as Albert, and Steve Martin was going to be Armand, which I feel like would have been very bad. Yeah, I think it wouldn't have worked as well, no. Absolutely not. Because I was thinking about it. Love Steve Martin. He's not as good an actor as Robin Williams. No. At all. No. Like, he's very he's a funny. comedian. He's very he's funny. Not, he's yep. hilarious. Yep. I love him. Yep. He's not a dramatic actor. Like Robin Williams had the stuff. Yeah. Like, obviously he got an Oscar. But like he really grounds Armand. Well so what happened was Robin Williams was like, I want to play the more grounded serious part. Can I play Armand? And they were like, fuck yeah. <laughs> After good. the Steve Martin thing. Smart fell apart. Oh got you. So then also apparently before Mike Nichols was even attached or anything 
they had optioned this movie in the mid 80s. Okay. And it was going to star Frank Sinatra and Dudley Moore. <laughs> and like apparently Frank was like on board. <laughs> and I almost lost As my As who? I'm assuming he would be Armand and Dudley Moore would be Albert because Dudley Moore is sort of more wacky. But as like 80 year olds? I mean, I don't think it was a good idea at all. <laughs> I'm saying, I was like, what? I mean, what I was just, that movie? Be? Oh my God. I don't even know. Offensive. I'm yeah. pretty yeah. sure it would be yeah. very offensive. Yeah. Yeah. No. Where this movie is just handled with such care. Yeah. There's a lot of stereotypes. Yes. And there's a lot of not stereotypes. Like there's a lot of a sure. range of characters. Well, and they show, I mean, we'll talk about it more and I'm jumping ahead. But this movie has one of the most touching oh. examples of like gay love oh, stories. Ever. Ever. And it's so a scene that like someone else might have left out of yep. the movie. They, they, or would have even just cut and been like, oh, we gotta cut it for time and like whatever. Well, whatever, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing because it puts the heart in the movie. Oh my god. Rob Williams is so good in this so, movie. So I mean, not to detract from Nathan Lane because oh, we'll talk I about fucking it. love him. Now here's a question. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Nathan Lane, yeah. part of me now wants to also retro review the producers, but I don't want to review movie? the Nathan Lane one. No. I want to review oh, absolutely the original. Not. Absolutely. But then I was thinking, I want a remake, maybe I don't, of a funny thing happened on the way to the forum with Nathan Lane. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, because they have the movie with Zero Mostel. Exactly. That's a whole thing. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, that movie's great. It's great, but it's like a lot of it. A whole lot of it, a lot. But no, here for it. I right? mean, I'm here for Nathan Lane to get all the work in the world. All of the work. I, I mean, Zero Mostel must have been like 111 when he did Funny Thing, right? So like, Nathan Lane can get in there. I, I think that would be really great. I feel like that show is like due for a Yeah, it's a been reboot. a while. Yeah. I mean, that show is great. I love it. And I'm not just saying it because I got praise for being eunuch number... I was oh, the only I'm sorry, eunuch. what? Oh yeah, in high school. They only had one eunuch? There, I was the only eunuch. And I literally they just... They left the eunuch? The, I had like three lines. Direction? They did. And I had like three lines and I ran across the stage just going, The girls! The girls! Were you afraid of them? I had to get I had to get them. They were like running away or whatever. And oh, I you to, were like... I, like, oh god, the girls! I have to get okay. the girls! Stupid. Great. But everyone loved it. I stole the show. <laughs> I'm sure you did. You can't dim this star. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I think it also did the set design, so that's how gay I was. <laughs> Except you were not out. <laughs> no. Well, everyone knew. <laughs> At the time of this movie's release, Nathan Lane was not out yet. But I was like, but I mean... But like... But like, I mean... Huh. But he was not out wow. publicly. Like, oh, I love you, Nathan Lane. Oh, yeah. I love you. Yeah. Can, yeah. can we be best friends? Like, obsessed oh, wait. with him. Oh, oh, obsessed. Have you seen Encore Encore? No. Oh my gosh, I can't find it anywhere. It's this like shitty TV show that's amazing that had one season where he is a famous opera singer, but he got so drunk and then he ate bad clams or oysters or something and they had to pump his stomach and they scratched his <gasps> vocal cords. So he has to go move back home to Napa with his like boring, boring family that's normal or whatever. And he's just like a big diva mess. Oh and my it's, God. Like, so good. Oh, I love that. But I can't that. find it anywhere. That's like Shit's Creek, but with an opera singer and like- It's amazing. I love it. I feel like Joan Plowright's in it. It's so good. We know what you're saying. Another new show about an opera clown whose career is over. This one's different. Who knows what fate has in store? A butcher chops up his hand. He finds he's happier being a florist. <laughs> encore, encore. NBC Tuesdays this fall. Another fun fact that right. I was looking up. Oh, this movie has this many Oscar nominees and winners, and it was like Robin Williams, Gene Hackman, you know, da da da. And then it was like Dan Futterman. So I was like, I'm sorry, what? And then it said Grant Hesloff, who is the guy who produced Argo. Oh. And who wrote uh, and produced Good Night and Good Luck. Mm. So he has a nomination for the, both of those. He's the like skinny photographer guy. Sure. From the National Enquirer. He's also in True Lies, which is what I always yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, that's also on the retro review list. I feel like it's a yikes. Uh, there's, but like, we can, you know, say this is no good, but yeah, this is great. Exactly. I think the majority of the movie is great. I think the, the last 20 minutes or so. Well, I think beyond that, just the overarching, you know, terrorist, uh, you know, 
the subtle, Racial relations? The subtle portraiture oh, of terrorism? Oh, oh, God. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. But there's so much that's great. Exactly. We'll just talk about Jamie Lee Curtis. Yep. Yeah. And also, jump, Dana, jump! Jump! <laughs> jump, Daddy will catch you! Jump! I did rewatch Kindergarten Cop recently. Holds up. Yep. It's fucking great. Yep. Shockingly, Arnold really does make movies that shouldn't work work. Something about the like, he has he has blind charisma. Yes, and like, and like he brings she, in like a good naturedness to there's it. There's something about him. I mean, yeah. he has that it thing. He, yeah, it's true. And it's like like Junior, that movie where he's pregnant. Yeah, it should be the biggest piece of garbage you've ever seen. It's not that bad. Like for what it is, you're like, I don't. Hate this. Also, Emma Thompson's there, so that helps. But you're just like, I mean, this should have no right to be. Dame Emma Thompson, thank you. Yeah. So what were we talking about? Oh, right, Dan Futterman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nominated for writing Foxcatcher and Capote. Who knew? Actually, I did know that he basically stopped acting and became a writer. Good choice. Not gonna lie. So this is Dan Futterman is the weakest link in this movie for me. I feel like. He's fine. He's because perfectly fine. It's a hard part to not hate. Well, that's the thing. And the, he's kind of has that dumb, cute thing where you kind of sure. go, ah, you know, you kind of forgive him. I just feel like if it was someone who was actually a little bit more cute and charismatic, it would be even like it could be then, even better. Then the the fact that he is a horrible person and horrible, a horrible, horrible son, person. a horrible son, like horrible, you would get over a little bit quicker. Because you'd be like, oh, it, like, I think they just needed a little bit of work on selling those lines. And like, this is the only way that I can get married and he I needed, really like, want this. one or two lines of why he really needed this. Exactly. To Albert, specifically. Exactly. Exactly. So we get into the nightclub, which seems fabulous. Oh, I mean, I want to go. I, right? Those bar, what are those called? Those, you know, the plates? The, trays? Serving trays? There you go. The trays <laughs> with the neon... So like, I don't think I noticed that. You didn't? No. So they're all, the barmen or whatever, the waitresses are walking around with big trays and they have like a neon uh, light around them. Love it. With different colors. Love it. Every frame has a visual delight of like, what's that in the background? Oh, what are they wearing? Oh, look at that wig. Oh my God, what's this? Like every detail yes. is so perfectly, like the set designer was great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Also, I love that it captures this like Miami 80s South Beach uh, Wolfgang Puck, Magnus. you know, whatever. But it would, but yes, but like late On 80s. The cusp of it, it, where it's like that, like Wolfgang Puckness South Beach, where you're just like, why is there so much pink and neon, like neon, and just like triangle shapes and like, you know, it's, yes. What is this horrible tiger robe and why do I want it so bad? I mean, everybody wants that. I want it so much. We looked this up previously. I feel like we did. We, we, right? It was up for auction. The actual one. The actual one from the movie and it's obviously sold now and I'm so upset and I can't find anything like it anywhere and I just want it so bad. It's so good. But anyway, we get into the club, we're setting the stage. Drag queens. Oh, Armin, the Kennedys are here. It's the oh third time this week. Do you want to pick up their check? Ted? No, it's the uh, younger ones. I wish we could get Ted. Give him a free round of coffee. Oh, I wish we could get Ted. Ted. Give him a free round of coffee. Make room for coffee. He says it's so weird. He like creeps up on them. Save room for, for coffee. coffee. <laughs> Leave room for coffee. So stupid. I also love the, the shade of that. Oh yeah. Also, I love the clientele that was coming to this drag club. It's a wide range. There was that elderly couple celebrating their yeah, anniversary. Right? Oh, mon congrats, my darling. <laughs> oh, mon congrats, you sweetie. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. She's like, hi, bitch. She's like, old money. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're here. Those fucking like, glittering streamer ponies that they're riding. Oh, my like, God. Yes. <laughs> No. It was just like drums. Was, I mean, it was like, what's this? Honey, please, you gotta get dressed for me now, please. Well, Starina oh. won't go on tonight. Oh she won't God. go on. <laughs> and we get to meet Nathan Lane, who's like everything. Everything. He also manages to make a character that like could be not grating, but like 
he's constantly like the the catalyst for problems, sure. right? He could easily play that role in a way where you're like, oh my god, right, every, like, oh like, you're so high maintenance that you're a pain in the ass. But it's instead, like not, it's like it's you're high like, maintenance, but you're lovable. You're lovable and you're fabulous. I love everything yes. about you. Like you're amazing. Yes. Victoria Page will not dance the dance of the red shoes tonight. Victoria Page is dead! You. Do you know how she died? How? Alone, weeping for her lover. Oh, no. Darling, have you eaten? You look haggard. Daddy, uh, please. We haven't talked about Hank Azaria, Agador Spartacus. We'll talk about it. Apparently his character was originally just going to be like her dresser. Like that was oh. the only part. And then they combined it to be Love also it. the butler. Smart. But that part of the role was based on Judy Garland's dresser. Don't look at me. I'm hideous. Fat and hideous. Oh, Agador, I'm in such pain. I know, honey. It's gonna pass. I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense. Love it. It's aspirin with the A and the yes. S that's scrubbed off. You're a genius. <laughs> what the hell are peer tablets? One before the show and one for after. No oh. more, so don't ask me. What the hell are peer tablets? It's aspirin with the A and the S scraped off. Brilliant idea. I know. We get the introduction to yes. Albert and Armand yes. and their interaction. Oh my God. And in many ways, they play it very much like a heterosexual couple, right? Sure. Albert's very much the woman, Armand's very much the man. And this scene plays out for me very much like, come to us, conservative audience. They're not like, oh, they're just like us, but like, they've got the same, they fight about the same shit. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, sure. Their fights are very similar to your fights. Well, in that, like, yes, it's yes. like this, you know. Not even our show, your show. Well, I want a palimony agreement, and I want one now. Well, I don't have a palimony agreement on me right now. Is tomorrow all right? Don't take that tone with me. That contemptuous tone that says you know everything because you're a man and I know nothing because I'm a woman. You're not a woman. <laughs> oh, you bastard! I do. Everybody, take it easy. Like, that whole interaction is so just like, come with us on this journey, yeah. it's okay, yeah. you know, like, yeah. we're yeah. drawing you in. Look at me, I'm this short, fat, insecure, middle-aged thing. I made you short? <laughs> <laughs> just the histrionics is so wonderful. Like, how do you make, like... It, that's what's the skill of Nathan Lane is Those really just like noises. making well not only just the noises but all of it like just like this entire high strung crazy diva character right. into someone so lovable. Hey. I'm so crazy. It's so crazy in here. It's like trying to get that chair out of the way of the door. Oh my god, the chair! <laughs> the fucking <laughs> The, oh, their apartment. I mean, we'll talk at length oh. about their apartment. Oh, my God. Could you please, please give me a moment to myself to prepare? Let's leave her. Come on. You're shaving now? Oh, my you God. didn't have time, time to, to wax. wax. <laughs> Indifference is the most awful thing in the world, Oma. Of yo-yo between 16 and 10. 16 again. You never said a word of encouragement. There's a man in your life. What? I sense it, and I saw a bottle of white wine chilling in the refrigerator. I only drink red, and so do you. Red has tannins, and I love that that wasn't a lie. I... That was just, he was trying to switch to white. Was he? Yeah. Tannins? I thought it was that, like, it seemed No, because to... Dan Futterman wants a well, beer. beer. But then it was, we're not going to have beer. It seemed like maybe Dan Futterman wouldn't drink red wine. But so... No, I think he was just, like, genuinely concerned about tannins. And I love that Rob Williams is putting an anklet on over pantyhose that then she's gonna put boots over. <laughs> He's putting them, it's just like something to do. Yeah. Oh, we need them to be doing something. Like that. Put, yeah, a, put, put this anklet on it. Oh my God. Hit me, hit me. That's what you wanna do, isn't it? Hit me. Hit me, go on, go on. Hit me. <laughs> and then we get to see the Mambo number. Oh, yes. With Chi Chi oh Rodriguez. God, right? In, in Tu Wang Fu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then, oh my god, the oh, gay man. dancer. And who then just like flings her off stage and is like, now well, my I time. that every moment, even that like, could be a throwaway, oh, they're doing a number on stage, uh, whatever, but like, no, no, we've informed his character. Yes. He's a sassy diva. Yes. And he has a jumpsuit down to his navel. I also love that this movie does not shy away from like eye candy. Oh, no. Like, in the back There's of every so shot. So many butts. So many butts. 
so many butts. And like, like so many thongs. Female butts. And men's yeah. butts. Butts all around. Butts all around. And just like, like chests and, and like waxed And there's tans. on the, um, when they do that big pan down onto them under the umbrella. Oh, um, were they on there the was, beach? On the beach, definitely boobs in the back. That makes sense. And it should be. It's South Beach. Makes total sense. But I was like, yes. Yeah. I'm glad this is in there. Love it. And we get to see Starina. Yeah. For oh. the first time. Yes. Who's everything. Well, and this is great because like, I mean, the whole time that you're watching it, you're thinking, well, there's just so much drama and hype and how whatever. How is she going to go on? How is she ever going to, like, they, they're just going to cut away from the performance and we're never going to see it. I mean, we see it. I always wanted to see the entire, I was like, exactly. give me five minutes of story. I would I'm love that as just like fine. a short film. Love it. And look what I picked up, a new mom. <laughs> yeah. And look at comes with accessories. Oh, don't look at me like that. I didn't kill him. He died and left me everything. The DVD extra should absolutely just have an extended cut of Starina's performance. Because it's Nathan Lane. Right. You're just like, I would watch literally... An hour and, and a half of this. Yes. <laughs> one one thousand percent yes. I would just watch Nathan Lane in drag, kibitzing with the crowd. Oh, happy... I think... I have found the one. The one? one. <laughs> oh, always wanted to see the whole thing. I, I, yes. I love it. You know, I hate to brag, but I know this grocery clerk. Next time Nathan Lane does something on Broadway, we should go. Oh, fuck yeah. It's a business trip. <laughs> Do you even know what a write-off is? Uh, yeah. It's when you buy something for your business and the government pays you back for it. Oh, and... Who pays for it? Nobody. You write it off. I saw him in the dunce. The nuns? The nance. The nance. Fucking great. Yeah. It was so good. And that's what I heard. It was amazing. We wanted to take my mom, because her name is Nancy. Well, there you go. I and mean, my sister's friends call her the nance. They're like, well, we're going to go drinking with the nance. Oh, she sounds so fabulous. Exactly. Oh, is the nance going to be there? And it's like a thing. And then it was like, wait, mom, this play is called The Nance with Nathan Lane. Let's oh, go. It was we never really made it. good. It was like emotional, but really funny. It was great. Loved it. So, so then we get our first real introduction to the glory that is Agatha Spartacus. <laughs> it's so good, Gloria. Come on, Gloria. <laughs> Such a beast to everybody. Come on, Gloria. It is. Lucy Ricardo wig. I'm a combination of Lucy and Ricky. Ricky. When you gonna let me audition for you again? When you have talent. When you have talent. <laughs> so harsh. So harsh. And yet then, when Agador sings later, everyone's like, oh, bravo! He can't perform in shoes. That's, that is true. That's the problem. Yeah. And then we get, which I mean only really works the first time you watch it, but we get this real fake out. Yeah, where you think that some trick is coming over while poor Nathan Lane is, is on performing stage, yeah. her heart out on stage. And Robin Williams is a duplicitous little snake. And you're just like, how could you, Robin? How, oh good, it's your son. <laughs> But they really... They stretch it out. They really... And then it, it finally, it's like pop. Or he says he dad says or something yeah. like that. I'm getting married. It's a girl. I met her at school. It's this wonderful... Uh, what, what are you... Are you upset? But let me tell you why. <laughs> Chugs the whole white wine. You're upset. But let me tell you why. why. <laughs> I like that there's a whole thing about like, oh, you're only 20. Which, who's buying that? Well, so he was like 26, 27 at the time. Guess how old Calista Flockhart was? 22. 30. <gasps> yes, Calista Flockhart, you <laughs> get it! <laughs> Playing 18, soon to be 19. <laughs> right? You do this, you're on your own. You got that sport, you don't come back here, you don't ask me for anything, okay? okay? I never want to see you again, get out of my life. Oh, I can't do it, okay. Oh, I had you going though for a minute and I feel like I kind of backed off, but like it was good, right? <laughs> you called my bluff. Uh, no, it was good though. Really? Bad. I think I backed off on a little bit. <laughs> Tell me it's all right. It's all right. And then we get the first introduction of Calista Flockhart and her parents. Yeah, oh my god. Oh, this is so good. I fucking love Gene Hackman so much. I miss him. He sort of just quietly retired and didn't tell anyone. I mean, how old is he? I know, I'm just, you know. Let like him live should, his life. I feel like it should be some sort of announcement. <laughs> that he's officially retired? Yes! I miss him! Well, because you never want to officially retire in the movie business. Because you never know. You could come back for a cameo. You could or be a uh, lady in Titanic. 
Gloria. What's, Gainer? What's her face? No. Old lady in Titanic. Yeah, I don't know her name. It was Glo Gloria. Rose. Gloria. Old Rose. Gloria something. Come on, Gloria. Anyway, we get our first introduction to them. Yes. And she's oh telling them that she got married. Or she's going to get married. Yeah. And, oh, Diane Wiest. Oh, my God. Diane Wiest is just the best. You know what movie we also should absolutely retro review? Parenthood. Speaking of Steve oh, Martin. Yeah. I feel like that movie doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. Oh, it's amazing. It's unme It's such a good movie. That was a staple in my house growing up. Oh, yeah. Up. But she's great in that. She's great in everything. Everything. Because she's a fabulous she's Diane kind. Wiest. <laughs> Fucking love her. Yeah. Where does the young man come from, Barbie? Raw. Don't call me Barbie. Well, in this whole interaction, I mean, this is just, this comes from Mike Nichols's, like, Broadway work. Like, he, he also, for all those movies I listed, he directed, like, ten times more plays. Wow. He did so, every play, I mean, Neil Simon, just everything. Love no, 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 just play, 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 play. So that's why, like, the timing is so fabulous in all of his movies. But we get this interchange between her and her parents, and she's like, we've been sleeping together for a year. Oh, God, has oh, he been tested? Oh, Kevin! Yes, and so am I. <laughs> We've been sleeping together for a year. Oh, God. Has he been tested? Oh, Kevin! Yes, and so have I. Oh! Just like the like, bam, 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 yeah. bam. The way Diane Reese says Kevin. Oh, my God. Oh, Kevin! Once uh, Nathan Lane comes back off the stage at Starina, he's like now in this Judy Garland, like, clown tramp outfit. Oh, my God. So I was like, where did this. How did we get from. Elegant, you yep, know, like yep, yep. To like, we Gina come back and it's later. just like, what and is now this? it's now it's this. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Where's your little chippy? Why didn't you tell me? Right. I mean, that is fair. Oh, absolutely. Surprise. Well, why? Because Val asked him to. I guess. That's I feel true. like they could have explored Val and Albert's relationship more, but yeah. I guess the by the end, the emotional like arc of the movie is that he does discover that that is truly his mom. Yes. You know, so like, sure. I guess you get there. Yeah, but I could have used a little more maybe front end explanation of it or a scene between just them or something. It was weird where it was like he gets the cake ordered for a little piglet from, right. you know, from Auntie Albert. Yeah. Don't forget to write to my piglet from his Auntie Albert. You got it. Oh. That puts a relationship Oh, I mean, I think she's looking it. at the photo but then she, and she's like and it's like and she's like ah, yeah my baby so that's that that the bar mitzvah <laughs> that's the bar mitzvah oh. time passes so quickly hey. to me in my mind she has raised him since he was a child exactly so like he's a fucking asshole exactly to his mom exactly so i put it down to like he's young not an excuse slash like the um, emotional arc of the movie is supposed to get you there, but I feel like it could have been like I really, ever so more focused I on agree. it. I really feel like if there were just a few more lines... Val really wants... needed a scene where he was like, I love her, like she's the love of my life. He needed to like convince exactly. them. Exactly. I of, need of to marry love. her. Yeah. Exactly. This is the one. Yeah. For me, you know, and then you're like, just well, like how can they... Just like you two knew, are the exactly. ones for each other. Exactly. Yeah. And then it could be like, well, how... And then, and then you have the perfect scene where Nathan Lane could just be like, well, Armand, how can we say no? How can you say no to that? And you're just like, yeah, you're right. You can't. You have to put on this charade. <laughs> Perhaps one more schnecken for the road. Do you mind? When the schnecken beckons. When the schnecken oh, beckons. <laughs> the schnecken beckons. Maybe just one more. Chocolate schnecken. Chocolate schnecken. Mm. 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 A triumph. I want to be Nathan Lane's <laughs> best friend. So we get back to their kitchen. Agador has made sludge and or Turkish coffee. <laughs> oh, what is this, sludge? Yes, it's sludge. I thought I'd make a nice change from coffee. You put some clothes on. <laughs> Turkish coffee, delicious. Mm, Turkish coffee, see? See? Mmm. Turkish coffee, delicious. See? And I always love the set design of this room. There's like a not working exercise bike next to the countertop that has hangers of, of like clean, like drying uh, clothes on the arms. Like good. they clearly never use it kind of good. thing. Good, good. And there's like an ironing board in the kitchen. Like it's just yeah. very lived in mm -hmm. and feels very real and I love it. I mean, this all happens basically over the course of 
a day, essentially. I mean, there's like the night before. It's like a weekend or whatever. It's like yeah. the night before and then the day yeah. and into the night. Yeah. And Nathan Lane changes outfits like three oh, like eight to four times. times. Yeah. yeah. And new, like, new fabulous lounging like linen, you know. No, God, wait, okay. So is it the same day yeah. that he pierces the toast and they go see Christine Baranski? Yeah. One of my favorite lines ever. Hector is like, he goes, are you afraid of my watermelon uh -huh. My watermelon my natural heat. You're afraid I'm too primitive, right, to be on the stage with your little estrogen rockets, right? Oh, yes, you're right. I'm afraid of your heat. My natural heat. Oh, yes, I'm afraid of your heat. <laughs> when Nathan Lane finally finds out about the wedding. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you've heard. I'm not saying anything. I promised your father. Mm -mm. But you're only 20, and if you throw yourself away on some dormitory slut, you'll be sorry for the rest of your life. There, enough said. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. <gasps> Everything about this movie has only gotten more relevant. Right? Where, like, all of the conservative stuff has only gotten more relevant. Crazy. <laughs> like, they cut to them watching that TV of just, like, white old men yelling at each other. Yep. It's a wonderful show. It's the most intelligent show on television. Just yelling across, no, no one can hear anything. Nope. Smartest show on television. <laughs> oh, oh I gotta fire this woman. <laughs> it's porno, not pronto. pronto. Well, I mean, what's this obsession with candy? <laughs> That's, That's like, like his... such a weird character thing, but I love it, you know? Bridget! I can really use some candy! Bridget! I can really use some candy! Here, you want one of these? Oh, this... It's his, you know, happy place. Sure, it's and there's just chocolates everywhere. I'm sorry, then she's throwing them all out. Oh, yeah. And he, like, picks them out of the... Ch <laughs> then we get another big catalyst of the movie with Eli Jackson's... Dad. Death. He died in bed? Whose bed? A prostitute? A minor? And black? What? I don't believe this. I don't fucking believe this! I can't fucking believe this! <laughs> Yet again, also, so fucking relevant. It's just like... Like he's on the Coalition for Moral Order! Right? He how just died that... in the bed of an underage black whore! How has this not changed in 20 years? I'm the vice president of the Coalition for Moral Order. My co-founder has just died in the bed of an underage black whore. So then this most recent time we're watching and they, they show the prostitute. Well, he looked kind of funny, but he was smiling, so I didn't worry. <laughs> I love that they repeat that line. Over and over. But I was like, who is she? She seems really familiar. Turns out it's Angela from Boy Meets World. Blew my mind. My. All of the press stuff and the paparazzi stuff has only gotten more relevant too. Oh, sure. With like them all hounding him. If we're gonna make the line shot, if we have to, I'll just do stand up. He looked kind of funny. Yeah, but he was smiling, so I didn't worry. <laughs> yeah, we got a good spot. And Diane Weiss' like amazing speech about the wedding and like hope and love against cynicism and sex. <laughs> a wedding is hope and a white wedding is family and morality and tradition. If at all possible, we get the Pope's blessing. It's not far. <laughs> He's too controversial. <laughs> He's too controversial. Well, um, Billy Graham. No, he's too liberal. Where's the candy? I shouldn't have let him go. How will he get back in? He's <laughs> climbing the ladder. I came through the orchard over the top of the barn. Oh, it's so dangerous. You could have fallen. I did. He's played for such, like, not an idiot, but he's just, he's, like, not a, a doofus, you know? Like, no. He's not, like, a moron, right. but he's but just like, played for, like, such a hypocrite in many ways. And a then, hypocrite and, like, a simpleton. He's not, um, thoughtful. Savvy. No. Oh, my God, and then the, the rehearsal with Nathan Lane and Celsius? Celsius? <laughs> Armand, did you see what he just did? He blew a bubble with his gum while I was singing. He can't do that while I'm singing! Celsius, look, this may be a drag show, but it still has to be a good drag show. Gum helps me think, sweetie, you're wasting your gum. <laughs> this is maybe one of the most iconic scenes. Something starts in your pelvis and works its way towards your heart, where it becomes heart slash pelvis. You do a eclectic celebration of a dance! <laughs> 
Fussy, fussy, fussy. Fussy, fussy, fussy. You do Martha Graham, Martha Graham, Martha Graham. Or Twyla, Twyla, Twyla. Or Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd. Oh, Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. 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 But you keep it all inside. Everything? Everything. Everything. Yes, yeah, so and just because you're 22 and hung doesn't mean you're... Let me do this, Albert. Fine, you're the director. Thank you. Fine, you're the director. <laughs> I still don't get That's it. Try more gum! <laughs> The ball starts rolling on this farcical plot of Calista Flockhart has lied to her parents that Dan Futterman's parents are actually a man and a woman. Right. That he's the cultural attaché cultural attaché to Greece. It's like a diplomat of sorts. I love that that keeps coming up multiple. Like <laughs> Diane Weiss just won't let that. It's like a diplomat. I mean, the son of a a cultural attaché, a, a sort of a diplomat, really. And that. They are not Jewish. Right. That their name is Coleman, Coleman. And that Nathan Lane is a housewife. How do we make Albert a housewife? I mean. She nailed it. She can play any part. You're a great performer. I'm a great director. How do you make Albert into a housewife? Well, you'd have to send Albert away for a few days. Are you nuts? You try sending Albert away. We'll never get him past the Keeleys. And Dan Futterman asks, Rob yes. Williams says, hey, you know, she told them this. Can we just tone a couple things yeah, down? Yeah, we get rid of some things in the house. Take out this all is... of the penis art. <laughs> the Neptune? It's a classic. classic. <laughs> the Kirby? That's art. art. What about this? What's uh, that? There's just so much penis art. So much penis art. I love it. You're not marrying some Nazi, are you? No, no. He's conservative, you know? I mean, like half of America is conservative. Robin Williams' response. Oh, yes. This is where you're just like, this movie like, could have oh, gone. Like, oh, this is a real movie. Yes, I'm a middle-aged fag. But I know who I am, Val. Took me 20 years to get here. And I'm not going to let some idiot senator destroy that. I'm a 50-year-old faggot. And I love that they use that. They use fag a lot. They do. And yes, it was a different time where, like, it was kind of an in-between. But mm -hmm. I like that it's, like, reclaimed. Yeah. Already, you yeah. know? And I was like, yes. Wait, they tell Agatha Spartacus to get a uniform? No, I'm going to look like a fag. Maybe, but you look like a fag in a uniform. Adieu. Don't ask, don't tell. And he says, fuck the senator. He yeah. says, fuck that. I'm not yeah. changing my life for, for anybody. Yeah. I know who I am. Yeah. And it's like such a great moment. It really is. And then he undercuts himself. For the movie to exist. Exactly. But oh my I God. Just... When he's like talking about like, he's like, dad, you got to tone it down. You're, you're too obvious. And then he puts the foundation on the wall. Just had those false spots painted, Val. Sponge painted though. It's uh, Rob Williams is a fucking great actor. Uh, yes, and uh, it's very sad, but we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate his life because and his he's masterful amazing. works. Yes, and it's a real good clip back and forth oh. between Florida and Connecticut. Oh my God, is that? I mean, I, somewhere up Pennsylvania. North. So, oh. well, I mean, not Pennsylvania because sometimes they travel to Pennsylvania, and the foliage is great. The foliage, I like right? to say foliage like uh, Marge Simpson. Just look at all this beautiful foliage. It's not foliage, Mom. It's foliage. That's what I said, foliage. The foliage. The foliage. But it's foliage. But he says foliage a thousand times. Kenny Daly from Frasier is the National Enquirer yeah. guy. Yeah, oh boy, oh and this. The boss from Frasier, I was just yeah. like, Men are like, come on, baby, you can lean on me. Oops, gotta go. <laughs> yeah, women are like, get away, get away, don't leave me. Here's men. Oh, yeah, here's women. Me, 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 me. All right, stop it, both of you. They do that very 90s thing of like showing a clip of Jay Leno or Letterman, right? Oh my god, oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> Join Jay on The Tonight Show with his guests Yasser Arafat and Kate Moss. Yasser Arafat and Kate Moss! <laughs> So absurd. Then he's like, oh, but I'm just gonna go out the back way over oh the barn again. Oh my god. And he gets out there and all the news reports, Senator Keelan, Senator Keelan. He's like on the ladder, like, uh. And then proceeds to give a full speech on the ladder. The absurdity of that. I am, as are all my uh, colleagues, Republican and Democrat, uh, liberal and conservative alike. Uh, Obviously, the circumstances around his death are very upsetting, and of course, his death as well. Yeah, and uh, uh, my family and I are planning an event. Uh, uh, I can't talk about it. Uh, uh. <laughs> he does the Nixon thing. 
saw the letter. Can you imagine if you saw footage of that? I am right. Where in real life, like, and this senator who's clearly escaping his house on a ladder. Once the, the lies and the sort of plot starts really get rolling, you have to sort of just say, okay, whatever. Oh, yeah, you sort of like, we're going we're I did with it. keep thinking, like, what the, like, they're like, oh, it's just for one night. We only have to lie to them for one night. And I'm like, you're never going to see the in-laws again? What about at the wedding? Right. You know, like, they keep lying about their last name. Oh, it's Coleman, not Goldman. Right. Blah, 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 blah. The D is silent. And it's like... Hilarious, but it's also like, but I mean, clearly she would like at least presumably change her name, and they would know right. that her name is now, now Goldman. Goldman. You know what I mean? It was just like, what did they think was going to happen? Were they easing them into it? I guess the idea like, was just to get the blessing, right. and then and then be like, like oh, well, the wedding's already planned. It's already done and happening. I don't know. I don't know. Here's to your life together. Oh shit! <laughs> no, no, that wasn't my toast. I just broke my glass. Hello, Barbara. Well, here's to your future. Shit. No, dear, that was not my toast. Who put Playboys in the bathroom? <laughs> Don't add, add. Just, just subtract. It's fair. Okay, we haven't really talked about the apartment enough. Oh, we should definitely talk about it. And the I feel like now that we're talking about the transition, yes. it's time to just talk about it. I mean, all there's the whole wall that's just like palm, palm from. Yes. And yes. then the bedroom is like pink striped. Yeah. And then oh, all and of the artwork bed. and the bed with like the gold It's like the ferns, Medusa, Medusa ferns. Oh, I mean everything is just gaudy gaudy tacky tacky over the top and I loved it. Loved it. They were on the beach, we get that fabulous pan down shot of them oh under the umbrella. In the umbrella, just all clothed. Everyone's naked, fully they're just clothed. like fully clothed. Oh, the sun is so great I as they're like love fully- the sun. You should take a couple days off, you look tired. Tired means old, and rested means you've had collagen. <laughs> We've been robbed. Oh, we've been robbed! Oh my god, it's sorry. I don't mean, no, I, I've just taken a few things out. They'll all be in place by the time you get back. So this is when I think Val, like, fully transitions into a schmuck. Where am I going? You didn't tell him. So rude. And he, like, well, and then, but Armand doesn't help. He, uh, we just thought it would be better if you weren't here. Val's fiance is coming tonight with her parents, and we thought that we thought it'd be better if you weren't here. I can't even imagine, and I don't even think they played it up enough. Like how hurtful. Like if you, this, if we're right. supposed to believe that he has, Nathan Lane has raised this fucking brat of a child. Right. And it's like, no, I don't want to call you my parent and I don't want you here to meet the woman that I'm going to marry. Yeah. That's fucking hurtful. My heart is breaking. Oh, please, don't cry. It's all right. You can stay. No, I don't want to stay where I'm not wanted, where I can be thrown out on a whim. It's funny and very emotional when he, you know, runs off and he's crying walking down the street and just saying like my heart is breaking yeah. i can't breathe i can't breathe all these things and it's like very sad but then at the same time like all of the extras are wearing g-strings <laughs> yeah walking past them yeah. every scene in this movie is so fucking funny but this is also one of the most iconic scenes i mean yes yes armand he finally tells albert he's like it's not yeah, you. you right her parents are fucking right. assholes yeah. you know he's like they're conservative assholes it's not your fault right. you know and oh, she's like oh maybe it would be a little bit much to introduce me as his mom on the first visit oh fuck him of course you can pass as an uncle you're a great performer i'm a great director and so he's gonna teach albert how to be straight <laughs> all right first get your pinky down it's up oh. again all right, and your pot. Oh, oh my God, are you crazy? <laughs> Goddamn pinky down. And then the way that Nathan Lane says, what? What? What about you? What? I can't even do it. It's just so good, the way that he says it every time. What? What about you? Like surprised <laughs> and, and yes, concerned? Yes, yes. yes. What? <laughs> what? Take your knife and your smear. Men smear. Smear, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Men, Men smear. Smear. <laughs> Stop trembling. Oh, I... Hold the knife boldly yes. in the strength. How <laughs> can I pierce the toast? You can always get more what? toast. It's not this right. I don't have to get hysterical. Oh. Albert, you yeah, pierce the toast. So what? <sighs> You're right. There's no need to get hysterical. So apparently, while they were filming this 
the toast scene, Mike Nichols had to be put under a sound blanket because he was laughing so fucking hard that he kept ruining all the takes. I don't blame him. Don't put little dabs on it. Smear! Too swishy? And then she's got like <laughs> claws on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too swishy? Let me give you an image. Yeah. It's a cliche, but it's an image. John Wayne. John Wayne. Just get off your horse and head into the saloon. Nice touch. And then his like... This like drunk lady. Wrong? No, I just never realized John Wayne walked like that. <laughs> so then... We're at the point in the movie where we laughed so hard we cried for the first time. They go to the park. Armand Goldman, you old so-and-so. How about those dolphins? Screaming Queen? <laughs> Screaming Queen? The way! The way! How about those dolphins? <laughs> it's the gayest thing in the movie. <laughs> How about those dolphins? <laughs> we were wound in face three to four times. <laughs> How about those dolphins? How about those dolphins? Oh my god. You old so so, -so. so, -so. <laughs> He's like, how'd you feel about that play at the bottom of the third? I don't know, fucking yeah, right. sports shit. How do you think I feel? Betrayed, bewildered, wrong response? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> this is very exciting. Yeah, it is, fella. Oh, right on, amigo. Damn straight. Damn straight. <laughs> fucking A. Fucking A, right. Fucking A. <laughs> They even boxed into that guy. Oh my god. Hey this. man, watch where you're going. Oh, I'm so sorry. Tough gazungas. Well, you take it easy, pilgrim. Oh. He bumped into me. Tough gazungas. Are you calling me an asshole? <laughs> no, oh, sorry. I'm an asshole behind, behind you. you. Could we hire, uh, say, a straight maid for tonight? There are no straight maids in South Beach. There are no straight maids in South Beach. And then we're introduced to kind of our final big character, Christine Bransky, who I love. I love her. Katie Archer. Or is it Mrs. Something? No, I'm between husbands. She's so amazingly fabulous. I mean, she's already on Fabulous yeah. Cunt Island, but just to reiterate, she's on Fabulous Cunt Island. Yeah. She's Val's mother that- Turns out. Haven't seen him since he was born. Apparently. Well, I love this that was so interesting. You know, so often we get these storylines and like pretty much every story ever is like yeah. the deadbeat the dad, dad that leaves or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh no, she like gave birth and then he's like, no, I'll raise it with Albert. Well, I, I liked that the movie was sort of non-judgmental about her choice. Absolutely. Um, and also that she was just replaced. Yeah. In a lot of, you know, it was like, oh, I mean, she was essentially they, a surrogate. They all seem to be on the same page about it and yes. okay about it. Yes. You know? Well, and I liked that he wasn't damaged. No. You know, he, he had two parents. He. Well, at the beginning, he says, I'm the only one in my fraternity that doesn't come from a broken home. Right, you know? right. And she has started some sort of gym. Uh, yeah, like a, a workout. A gym. And her, yeah. And her secretary that's reading Nietzsche. Oh my God. That's reading Nietzsche. It's so stupid. And then Nathan Lane's sitting there on the couch reading all of this stupid... <gasps> Sorry. And we sort of get an organic backstory yes. to... Yes. Um, Good exposition here. Right? No, it doesn't feel like... Er, just shove I it I also in. love that it's still the gayest thing you've ever seen. Absolutely. We find out that... Christine Bransky bribed the doorman to get into Armand. They were in the same Broadway play, and yep. she bribes them to get into his room, and he comes home, and there's a woman in my bed. And I thought, what the hell? Let's try it once with a woman and see what those straight guys are raving about. <laughs> and apparently they did it twice. Yeah. So maybe he's, you know. A little. A little by yeah. leaning. He's on the he's on the spectrum. Leaning. Leaning involves He's by wanting. leaning. Oh my god. <laughs> I like that a lot. And she very, uh, frankly, you know, as, as she's opening the champagne bottle oh between god. her legs, you know. 
I'm not exactly maternal. Oh. But I am. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm very maternal. Well, don't worry. I'm very maternal. And Albert's practically a breast. You know, not all women are maternal. You know, sure. it's just very, sure. like, um, progressive in yeah. many ways about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And then they do a dance number. Oh, my God. And then they do a dance number. Luck is in the air. Running about quite friendly. I forget most of the words, but... Speaking of funny thing happen. Oh, yeah. So, Love is in the Air, that song they sing, is an unused track from Funny Thing. It was going to be the opening song. Really? Instead of comedy to Oh, my God. What a mistake. I mean, smart choice, song time. You could catch your death Cause love is around Something familiar, something peculiar Something for everyone Comedy tonight Tragedy tomorrow Comedy tonight They ask Christine Bransky to like be the pretend mom for right. the night yes and she says, well, of course, sure. you know, I'd love to yeah. do this for him. She, I love that they really commit to it. Like, she doesn't even know how old he is. Right. She's like, God, what, he must be, what, 20 now? Like, she's she not even, like, she doesn't even counting, yeah, like, no. oh, I regret it, or what? Mm -hmm. I was just like, I made my choice. Yeah. It was the right one for me and for Belle. Yeah. And, you know, and now look at my fucking empire. Yeah. She's fondling his chest hair, and Albert... Comes in. Fine. <laughs> and then gets in the car, and the horn... <laughs> been driving back from Miami with a parking brake on at 20, 20 miles an hour. I had to take the fucking bus. Are we crucifying someone tonight? Oh, I forgot. There's one more character left and it's the crucifix. Oh my god. Val, I mean, is like, oh, well, it, it'll be better without an uncle. It'll be better without him. You know, I'm glad my mom can come and Albert hears him. Fucking asshole. He really is. I'm only here to get my toothbrush. Oh. How I would have loved to have seen your children. Do you need the crucifix? It is the prop for martyrs. Shouldn't you be holding the crucifix? It is the prop for martyrs. <gasps> no, I just came for my toothbrush. Agador, could you get it for me? And then it's in a little cozy. Oh, Sasha, he tosses it over his shoulder. I'm going to Los Copo. The only thing in Los Copo is a cemetery. Exactly. You're going to the cemetery with your toothbrush. How Egyptian. Very Egyptian. Very Egyptian. <laughs> I love the shade. That makes it feel more real, where it's just like the constant undermining of poor Nathan Lane's like genuine emotions. Right. But yet also it's like also histrionic. It's like histrionic genuine emotions. Yes, yes. And it's like clearly this is their relationship. Like, exactly. like, like, he's this way all the time. All the time. Yes. Pretty much regardless yes. of this insane farcical situation. Yes. So Robin Williams is like, this is how I deal with it. Exactly. You know what I mean? You can cook, right? Your father seems to think so. Then we get the most amazing oh. speech. Right. Love well, it's, scene it's ever. Like, yeah, it's like I'm gonna undercut you, I'm gonna like, you know, undercut your emotions and your feelings and whatever and like devalidate you, so to speak. Yeah. But then when it's like real, yeah, he's there. When he says, "Yes, I'm with you because you're ridiculous and you're this and this," and people laugh at you, and I'm still around because you keep making me laugh. Yeah, you know. And he talks about he's got a fabulous plot of land that his grave is going to be in. And he goes, "Well, I have to sell mine and get one in that shithole Los Copos so I can never miss a laugh." And that whole palimony. I mean, we oh my god, palimony. About the palimony agreement. I had to look this up because yeah. I was just like, I always just kind of assumed that it was a made up thing. Cause like obviously alimony is a thing. Right. And I was just like, so is palimony like a friend's alimony? Turns out, yes. It's a palimony. Yeah. <laughs> this one I own, now I have half of all your stuff. I don't, oh, I don't want all it? this. Who had it to begin with? And yeah. it's like, it's, it's yours. It's yours, you know. I, oh, I don't want all this Armand, you know. Yeah. And he goes, so Who cares? you own it's half just... of my life, I own half of your life, like we're together. Yeah, you know? oh, it's just really the sweetest. Yeah. Half of the club? What does it matter? Take it all. I'm 50 years old. There's only one place in the world I call home, and it's because you're there. And it's just amazing, you know? Yeah. It's like so good. When I did realize, watching it this time, they never kiss. No. But you don't notice because they develop this the relationship so Yes, well. yes. So it's like you're not like wanting for it. No. Because you don't notice because there's so many emotional scenes. And they're them. so comfortable with each other as a couple. Exactly. 
Yeah. But I was huh. like, wait a minute. They never. No, they hold hands. They hold hands. Which they never sometimes, kiss. sometimes is more intimate. Well, I, I fully got a complete intimacy from them, and it wasn't like a, ew, we're not going to kiss no, at no, 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 all. No. It was probably a note or some sort of censorship from some Maybe. studio. Had like, well, we could show all of this stuff and right, cuss right, up a right. storm, but no, we can't show them kiss. But yeah. I didn't necessarily miss it because no, it's so No, because it was still developed. so tender. Yeah, it really is. That handhold on that uh, fabulous bus stop bench. The Toontown bench? Yeah. So they make up and it's beautiful. And then we find out Robin Williams has told Albert, like, you can stay, yes. you can be Uncle Al, and it's wow. going to be fine. And Val is still such a fucking brat about a it. fucking brat. Okay, don't talk too much. It doesn't matter. This is not going to work. Come on, don't be so negative. We can do this. Come on, son. Yeah. Like, we can pull We're, it off. You're young. Where's your optimism? Where's your optimism? Let's do it. And then Nathan Lane comes in in his suit. One does want a hint of color. I mean, the, the way this... Oh my god. Play for hours. Out. And he just. And they don't say a word. No, the they whole literally scene, don't say a like... word. One does want a hint of color. <laughs> so good. What about those? <laughs> They're like full stockings. Yeah, they're not just pink socks, they're full stockings. She works hard for the money. She e e e e so hard for the money. E e e e e I work hard for the money, so you better treat me right. Ah, that's right. And Dad Photo was like, put on your shoes. Get ready to go. I never wear shoes because they make me fall down. Use your regular voice. Okay, okay. so catchy. Like, Dan Butterman's pretty much an asshole to all of them. Everyone. I never wear shoes because they make me fall down. Just put your shoes on, okay? And talk in your normal voice. It is sort of interesting to think that, like, so clearly Dan Futterman, like, went to some Ivy League sure. school-ish, I'm, I'm sure. you know, whatever, like, yeah. East Coast Ivy League-ish, yeah, right? Or... He got more conservative. Ish, right, 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 right. Going away from his conservative parents. Yeah, and his fraternity. And Callista Flockhart is very yes. liberal for yes. having such conservative yes. parents. Yes. And she's just like, I'm sleeping with him and we're getting married and like, fuck you, you yeah. know, basically. Yeah. So it's sort of like. That is interesting. You know, yeah. They don't really dig into it. But no, it's but there. that is. Yeah, that's true. We get another amazing pan of G strings down oh, the street. Next to the car. Next to the car. They're all looking out the window. This is a lot less like Palm Beach than I thought. And it's just like butts. Butts. Yep. Yeah. But yep. When they bought it, it used to be all sand. She's just like, I'm, I'm just lying now. Just lies. Just coming out of me. This all built up around them. And then I love later, well, we bought it 15 years ago, and it was all Jew. It's mostly Jewish. Well, you know what they say, say where there's, there's sand. sand. <laughs> and then I always just kind of wonder, so we get the first introduction of Agador Spartacus. Yes. And I always wondered, like, why that lie? Like, was Agador too gay? Right. Why, like, yeah, why, is Spartacus like an in joke? Is, right. Because like, Spartacus gay? seems gayer to me. <laughs> right. Spartacus. Yeah. You know, it's like what? Good evening. I am Spartacus, the Goldman's butler. Please come, come in. Coleman or Goldman? Goldman. The D's silent. silent. It's just this whole conversation oh about God. their last name. Oh my God. That then Nathan Lane Chris, we don't really know where we are until we've heard our last name pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that explains it. <laughs> that, oh, well, that clears it up. It's that laugh that kills me every time. <laughs> it's just like that pause and the, like, it's so good. It's not so much a vacation home as it is a monastery. <laughs> Oh, look at all these old books! Nancy Drew and the Case of the Burning Candle. You have the whole series. Secret of the Burning <laughs> Candle! You have the whole series! <laughs> I love that she says, maybe this is a real Nancy Drew title, but Nancy Drew and the Secret of the Burning Candle seems like she solved that mystery in the title. 
just putting it out there. Then they're in the... What would you call that room they're in? Oh like, my god. The chairs oh, Jesus knows. The, 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 these church the chairs and like a church pew as a coffee table. table. And like, this high back. Dude, the set design for the redo is so. Just linen. Grave. <laughs> I. Oh my god. When he goes through and he's trying to find the door, it's <laughs> just in the curtains. This is my. <laughs> we get Gene Hack and yeah. Oscar clip. Oh my god. Talking about foliage. My wife and I used to uh, go down to Virginia every autumn to see the foliage turn. The foliage and the green and the trees. trees. Although I do think that the foliage in Ohio is underrated. <laughs> Turning of the seasons and purple mountains, yeah, majesty. majesty and red leaves, purple mountains, green fields. The purple, and green the, field, the orange, and the, the red. We go trees. down to Virginia yeah. just to see the autumn change. It's just rambling. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. And then of course in the background there's just this mess. Christy, oh my god. <laughs> I'm off. Is that you? I'm going to be dreadfully late. <laughs> the trees. Pennsylvania's nice too. Oh, was that mom? I was so caught up. Was that my wife? Just now on the phone? I think it was. I, I was just so caught up. Gosh. And then, oh, well, she's going to be a while. We should start dinner or whatever. Let's give her half an hour. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm home. When he goes through, he can't find the curtain, and he goes through and then falls. He goes, I've never had so much go so wrong so quickly. <laughs> I'm sweating like some kind of farm animal. <laughs> His face just trying to like be normal, like just okay. like. <laughs> and, then, and then I feel like it, this is maybe the beginning of the bottle of Jameson in the kitchen, where it's just like taking swigs of whiskey. <laughs> Thank you, Agador Spartacus. You may go. Oh, he's such a problem. We never know what makes him laugh. <laughs> But I love that every time they cut back to the kitchen, they then dead cut back to like whatever horribly conservative conversation yes, is going on. Yes. It's just like, gays in the military, military. you know, it's like, then I found out Alexander the Great was a fag. Talk about gays in the military. <laughs> it's just like, the best. The best. Fuck it. It's one night. I can live through it. <laughs> of course, it's very wrong to kill an abortion doctor. They're just doing their jobs. Kill the mothers, but that'll stop them. Oh, I know what you're saying, but then the fetus will die too. The fetus is gonna die anyway, so why not let it go down with the ship? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then we get, oh, I could have danced. Well, this is when everyone seems the most comfortable. Yes, well, I feel like the alcohol is kicked in. Yes, and they're all, I mean, I guess show tunes are just uh, like across the Turns aisle. Turns out, yeah. You know, it's like okay for everybody. Robin Williams is playing the piano. Yep. Diane Weaver. We have along. a lovely voice. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. And this is the only scene where we get Val and Calista Flockhart Barbie together. Ra. Yeah, Bar Barbie Ra. <laughs> like talking amongst themselves. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. And being sort of like, oh, this is them as a couple. Yes. You know, instead yeah. of like, oh, he's a drag queen. Oh my god, I keep oh, forgetting. I keep forgetting that. I could, could have died. Yeah. And, then, and then Agador <laughs> comes out. I I, I only know that I could have danced and danced, and they're all doing it together. Oh my god, it's so, so good. What a lovely voice you have, Agador Spartacus. Another iconic scene, just like... Well, for some reason this always took a... Oh, I played Eliza in high school. Oh, I bet you were lovely. Like, it's always, like, weird. Yes. Like, so he's, like, into, into it. her. Yes! You know, I played Eliza in high school. I bet you were lovely. I mean, every moment of this movie is pretty much iconic. Oh, pretty much. <laughs> they get to the table. Oh my god. Same, like, high-backed yep, church mission, chairs. Yeah. Oh, what interesting balls. It looks like young men playing leapfrog. Is it Greek? Is it Greek? Oh! <laughs> Mine has girls. Does yours have girls? I've got one. Yeah. Naked. 
Greek boys. And girls. Don't you have any girls on your bowl? I have one. So do I. What kind of idiot puts the balls out with the get the bottom of the bowls? Stop ladling! Takes the whole pot. Wait, there's a shrimp. There's just shrimp. Holding all of the all shrimp. Of the <laughs> that seemed to be raw. I mean, we were uh, not questionable, sure. Questionable. This is his specialty. Seafood chowder. Oh, isn't that an egg? What? An egg. Why, yes, it is. It is a huevo. Is that an egg? It's a huevo. Uh -huh. This is so Guatemalan. <laughs> a woman is said to be worth her weight in hens, and a man's wealth is measured by the size of his cock. Will you excuse me? By the size of his <laughs> cock. <laughs> every little, like, how every little thing ends is yeah, perfect. Yeah, like, drops yeah. the spoon. <laughs> And then walks away. Walks back to the kitchen. And they all take a bite of the soup and then <laughs> they <all> crap. <laughs> sweet and sour pesto soup. What you say is seafood chowder for? What the hell is sweet and sour pesto soup? I don't know. I made it up. I made it up. Oh God, this is a nightmare. Every moment is my favorite, but this yeah. might be my favorite. I mean, it, I, he's just hitting his head against the. Fr he didn't I mean, make an entree. He didn't make an entree. The sweet and sour pesto soup <laughs> is an entree. It's like a stew. stew. Why do you think I put so much in it for? <laughs> to get the more soup before they eat it up to get to the bottom of the bowls! Shut up! It's okay. We're all right. It's fine. Just shut up, goddammit! Stop crying! Goddammit! Yeah. <laughs> and then he slips. And apparently that was not planned. <laughs> they had to keep a straight face. He just totally falls out of frame like perfect Pratt fall, like... Yeah. With the pot and like yes, a hot pad yes. and everything. <laughs> Fuck the shrimp! It's alright, stop crying! God damn you! What are you standing there for? Go! Go! Should be in a minute! Go! Damn it! Fuck the shrimp! Cuts right to Nathan Lane. And that's when the day they decided to find a cemetery that they really loved instead of eating tofu. Uh. <laughs> and from that day on, they decided to look for a cemetery they really loved instead of eating tofu. <laughs> I want to know what that story was about. <laughs> that like tofu's healthy and they would have lived longer. I don't know. Tofu's so expensive they couldn't afford a nicer cemetery. I had questions. Yep. I loved it. Yep. Well, was this before or after the whole live in... Live on Fisher Island, Island get married, married in Palm Beach. Beach. That way you'll have the best of Florida. I like that at a certain point it just really starts to fall apart. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know how much longer I can keep doing this. Well, she said all that wine. Everyone's, oh my god, I love <laughs> Shall we have our coffee? In the... Then, shall we have our coffee in the living room? I feel like that's how I want to end every party. <laughs> shall we take our coffee in the dining room? <laughs> And then um, I totally spotted Anne Cusack as oh my like God, pretty yeah. much uncredited reporter. I pretty mean, she was like a line. Yeah. Well, and this was really weird because before we started watching it, you were like, oh, if only Joan Cusack were in this movie somehow. Well, I said, if Joan Cusack, because she's fabulous and everything, if Joan Cusack was in this movie, who would she play? And I was like, well, no one, because literally everyone is cast perfectly. Yeah. But like add in a character that's sure. Joan Cusack, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, but it was maybe, weird. Maybe she's like someone in the club. Fine with it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. She, Singing Macho Man? She could have like two lines and she would sell the shit out of it and Absolutely. it would be amazing. Absolutely. Uh, Nathan Lane's wig malfunction with the... Oh my god. <gasps> Let me, can I, where's the bathroom? Yeah. Let's no, all like, go together. I'd like Mother Coleman to take me. Oh, I, kiss me, kiss me. They all like come with her to the bathroom. Oh my god, this is so emotional. I think I'm gonna cry. My man. Isn't this wonderful? Oh. All of us together, all of us. We're all going this is so moving. I think I'm going to cry. This is a scene where they finally get to relax. To, I mean, they get well, to like... Well, yeah, where they're separate. Drop the facade. Yes, yes. You know, oh, I have a bread in my work if you don't move too much. Where the hell's the spirit gum? You know, they get a whole little thing. And we get to see Diane Weiss and Gene Hackman really have a scene alone, which helps oh too. God, yes. I mean, like, informs oh, what's going on. And he gets so ugly, and I love her reaction to him. Oh, it's yes. Like, him and his cold uh, whatever in his decadent China. I've seen this all before. Aristotle Onassis was just like this. And all of the French. He's the, the pretentious European, the worst oh, yeah, kind. The worst kind. <laughs> snobbery 
and that dig about Grover's Corners. Kevin, you're rambling. Well, it just makes me furious. Kevin, you're rambling! <laughs> he's just like spouting things. It's true. <laughs> and then he says, and he tells, he serves dinner, and he does yeah. this, and yeah. he tells that beige savage what to do. Yeah. <gasps> and she is and just like. And that's where her reaction is just like, who the fuck are you? She goes, are who you? are you? I don't even know who you are. And you're like, yes, yeah. I am wheezed. I don't think I've ever seen you before. What do you mean? I don't even know who you are. I do love that the whole time they're eating nuts because they're starving because dinner was disgusting. <laughs> yes. He says, oh, well, she just grew up in Grover's Corners or oh, whatever. Yeah. And that snobbery, like, dig about Grover's, Grover's Corners. Corners. But what's funny is, you know, what, you know what Grover's Corners is, right? Our town. It's the fake town, town from our town. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the setting of our town. But it's like a fake place. Well, it's not like a real place. It's but supposed it, to be every town. But, like, the fact that Gene Hackman is like, oh, Grover's Corners is a great place to grow up. Like, he thinks it's a real place. Oh, does he? Yes! Oh, okay. I totally. thought he was just using it as, like, no! a... No! He totally doesn't get it at oh, all! Oh, I love it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's yes. like being like, I'm from Everytown, USA. Sure, sure. And, like, oh, I hear Everytown's great. It was a good place to grow up. Nice and safe. He's like, they totally fair. lie and fair. say that he's fair. from Grover's Corners. Oh, my God. I did not pick up on that. Pretty sure that it was like... Sure. Of course he hasn't seen our town. No, of course not. They don't make women like that anymore. Hello? I'm home. I forgot my key. Hello? Oh my god. <gasps> it's Mrs. Coleman. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Goldman. Goldman. I forgot my key. Mrs. Goldman? <laughs> oh no, you're in the wrong house. Good evening. Um, may I take your purse, as usual, or for the first time? Or for, or the, for the first time! time. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't know, I don't know what the, fuck know what the lie is anymore, what do I do? How many mothers does Val have? Just one. <sighs> this is my mother. Like, Val isn't maybe fully forgiven in my eyes sure like it's such a good scene yes. you know how many mothers do you have just one one and he pulls off wig. albert's wig this is my mother and it's yes. like that redemption moment yes. of so just, just like, like yes it is Aww. it's like a mammy gummer gif moment <laughs> yes. yes i don't understand these are my parents this is my wife i don't understand She's a man. They're both men. You can't be. You can't be Jewish. No, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. This is a man. What? What? I feel like I'm insane. <laughs> They're both men. Kevin! Kevin! I feel like I'm insane. Look, it's really very simple. Armand and well, I... She called you Mother Coleman. You... Kevin, Kevin, nothing's changed. It's still me. Nothing's changed. I'm still me. Right. Just with one tiny right. difference. Well, right. not tiny. Right. And then this face. Like, this is a gift for every moment. Just. I may not be as vulnerable as Mrs. Coleman, but I still have feelings. Somebody has to like me best. Somebody has to like me best. best. <laughs> Barbara, I made your mother cry. Take it easy, Louise. Take it easy. Barbara, I made your mother cry. Well, and then we get Senator Keeley. Senator Keeley. I was trying I'm... to make a turn. <laughs> they Collected. find out that yes, the press has shown up. Oh, well, that's just print news. Oh, Florida Eagle. Well, that's just print news. Another news fan just showed up oh, when you know it, the one night I don't perform. And they're going into the club. Oh, wouldn't you know it, the one night I don't perform. Can I get somebody some soup? No. no. Does anybody want any more soup? Mm. No. <laughs> That's, that line felt like it was out of Clue. Yes, yes. I mean, this movie does have the timing of Clue. Yes. And then Christy Brancy's in the background eating soup. Oh. I love... That detail. Like, yes. she didn't have dinner. No, she's probably she's hungry, hungry. Even though this is disgusting the, soup. The only thing I would have liked better is if they had turned the soup into like a shrimp cocktail and she just Ooh. had all of the shrimp. Yes, she got oh. the shrimp because yes. they got it together. They didn't, exactly. I don't really drink. Jamba. Now it's the time to pretend. 
Well, that's the time to pretend. <laughs> we get the Gene Hackman reveal, and he's dressed like Barbara Bush or something. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. And just. We are I don't want to be the only girl not dancing. <laughs> I told them if they put me in white, I would look fat. <laughs> they want to dance with me. It's his dress. I told him white would make me look fat. I mean, I love that Diamond says like a biker oh hat God. on. Oh, I got love her outfit. Dress. Oh, it's so good. And she starts like bumping but and grinding. But I guess grinding. that guy. I've never danced with a man before. There's always a first time. There's always a first, first time. time. And I was like, first time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For him. Right. Here to dance, baby. Care to dance, baby? <laughs> and then they're like, don't know who Which, should lead. Who should lead, exactly. Who should lead. Oh god, oh god. Calista Flockhart looks like... Oh my god, this like, little pixie number. She looks like Lydia from Beetlejuice. You know, she's got like the wig on or whatever, but then like a pixie version of her or something. Yes. I'm just as pretty as any of these other guys. And then they get out and go to Christine Brancy's car. We get the one camera oh man going... Hmm. hmm. Yeah, wait no, a couldn't second. Couldn't be. Couldn't yeah. be. Mm -mm. Meet me in 20 minutes at the corner of El Dorado and Palm. Lady, not for a million dollars. <laughs> now for a million dollars, lady. So I was like, wait, so did Christy Moransky just drive them back to Connecticut? No one knows. She definitely drove them to Miami. Sure. To her house, I guess. I guess. And, and then they called and was like, hey, I'm over here at this house. And it's like, how'd you get there? Well, shut up. I don't care. Clearly you're a uh, fired yeah. driver. Yeah, they just hired a different driver. You would be ready for it to be the end. I mean, right. obviously you're never ready for it to end. No. You're like, I just Again, want more of this, this always. This is another movie where you're like, and three more dance sequences yes. and performances yes. and like, yes. Seven more, more hours. More, more. Yes. It could really end on We Are Family and you're like, yeah, yeah that's like, lovely. And then the three men, you know, Albert and Val and, and Armand are kind of like, oh, oh God, we, yeah, did we did it. it. That was a lot. Or whatever, yeah. yeah. We made it out alive, but instead they cut to the wedding. Mm. And Nathan Lane just, <laughs> just crying. What I love, crying, crying. thinking of the two different sides where it's just like all of these old, like, buttoned well, up. Well, you get like, like Tempest du jour. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Dole is gorgeous. Bob Dole is gorgeous. Agatha Spartacus is. One of the best men. And I always thought Calista Flockhart looked so cute with her little yeah. bun and everything. I was like, oh, I don't want this to end. I yeah. love it so much. <laughs> Freeze frame. <laughs> with like... So, yeah, I mean, this is like literally one of the funniest movies ever. It's, it's hilarious. It's a masterpiece. I mean... I expect no less from Mike Pickles. I just love him. It's a classic. The cast is fabulous. The acting is like top notch. Yeah, and it's even more poignant. Oh my god, surprising me. Like, shocking that it got made. Really, yes. you know yes. what I mean? Like yes, the the way that it got made. Yeah, thank God it did. I this movie is everything. Yeah. If you haven't watched it and you listen to us quote it for fucking ever, then. I mean, that's on you, but go watch it. I mean, you won't be disappointed. You literally won't be disappointed. You could watch it a thousand times right after watching this and still be happy. Fuck the shrimp. <laughs> How about the dolphins? It's just, it's just too good. Oh, I've pierced the toast. You can always buy more toast. Oh, uh, cheers to everyone. Yeah. How about those dolphins?